Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, let's start off with the overall mission of the AAN's Academic Neurology Committee. Uh, what are you sort of hoping to address in terms of challenges facing this field? I think the Academic Neurology Committee is a little bit complex because I consider it like an umbrella committee that oversees multiple very important subcommittees. So it's broken down into the division chief subcommittee, the department chair subcommittee, the advancing women in neurology subcommittee, and the diversity officer subcommittee. And there are two work groups underneath that also, the BA work group or the business administrator work group and the associate professors. So we oversee a lot of really important committees that are doing important work in academic neurology. And they all do different things that are somewhat complementary and somewhat overlapping, but also divergent. So we're able to come up with some overall mission ideas or things that we think should be tackled by individual groups. They go off and tackle them and come back and report to us and then we give opinions about what would be most helpful. It's really designed to help every academic member of the, uh, of the, um, of the American Academy of Neurology and make sure that we are meeting everyone's needs. So we need to be very diverse in our interests and our coverage and hopefully we've accomplished that. Absolutely, and what, what is unique about leadership in academic neurology? Well, I think um, you know, as leaders in academic departments or divisions, um, one has to advocate for a broad constituency. People that are you know, world-class clinicians who spend a lot of their time at the bedside or in the hospital or in the clinic. One advocates for the highest quality of education in neurology, both at the early level, high school if we can, uh, medical school certainly, and then our residency and fellowship training programs. And of course, you know, neuroscience is based on science, and so we have to think about the academic mission of discovery, evidence-based care, um, next step innovation. Uh, so an academic neurologist uh, or an academic neurology program is one that actually, actually harnesses all of those uh, various missions into a cohesive, forward-thinking uh, uh, sort of community uh, that we foster. And Dr. Greer, how does leadership change over the course of an academic career? Well, that's a really interesting question. I think it depends on an individual's path, and there are a lot of different pathways to leadership. Uh, I'm currently a chair of a department, Dr. Manuel is as well, uh, and I think we came there from very different pathways. But, you know, life kind of takes you in, in different directions, and you look at where you are and what you're doing, and I think the most important concept is to think, what's going to make me happy and fulfilled in five years, ten years, for the rest of my career and understanding that that can change. And speaking of chairs, you both went to uh, this year's Ralph L. Sacco Neurology Chair Summit. Can you talk a little bit about how that was valuable to chairs? Well, I think first of all, it's a community. Um, and you know, leadership is both incredibly rewarding, but it's also a time where you, um, in your career, where the people around you are often not people with whom you can share some of the day-to-day -day challenges. You know, you don't, it's not the right location to do that. It's not necessarily the, the best place to voice the challenges of being a leader. Um, so the summit really brings leaders together where we can have a, a very open uh, sort of space to talk about the real challenges of being leaders in academic and, and, and community-facing neurology practices, um, to think together about the innate challenges in healthcare administration, financial stewardship, uh, the you know, ever-changing landscape of different uh, sort of uh, community issues. I mean, we all went through COVID and a unique uh, experience for everyone in terms of the major shifts we all had to come to, play, to bear. And I think having a community of other leaders provides a forum uh, for really important conversations in our field. Having a community, like Brenda was saying, of other neurology chairs with different experiences can be extraordinarily helpful. And we didn't have that before the Ralph Sacco Summit. There was just not a lot of networking. You'd see each other at meetings, you'd shake hands, say, how are things going? The other person would say, great, and he didn't know if it was really true. <laughs> now, like, all the stuff starts to come out of, like, here are the real challenges that we're facing. And not only do we recognize the challenges, we come up with creative solutions to fix them together and, and come up with resources that'll help uh, other chairs. So we created a life cycle of the chair toolkit as an example of how do you onboard as a chair? How do you, what are the things that you need to know? How do you look at a spreadsheet? Uh, how do you mentor faculty and develop them? How do you work with philanthropy? These are all things that every chair needs to know, but there was never a resource for this before. And I think since the chairs started really coming together as a group, now we have a, an opportunity to really do that. Well, thank you both so much for sharing your perspectives, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the meeting. Thank, thank you. you very much.